one straight ATC championship. Well, you know, it really hadn't set in yet, but uh, just to see the smiles on the faces of these young men. And uh, we started back in August, and we told them it would take 122 days of total commitment. And just to see those guys and miss all the distractions, the possible distractions, you know, this, this team right here is, is, is a special group of young men led by a great group of seniors. And, and for them to have a chance to, to get their 53rd win and, and to win four titles in a row, so happy for our fans. Um, just you think about 10 years ago, Coach Sweeney talked about 10 years ago, he was given an opportunity, and, uh, and here we are now, and we're just getting started. So just unbelievable you know, amount of focus by, by young people uh, in this day and age to, to, to put themselves aside, to believe in something bigger than themselves, and, and to come out and to, and, to, and, to, and to set history. How much was that first run by Travis scheme or just individual effort on his part? You know, I wouldn't say it was him because obviously it was it was everybody. It was all 11, and that's that's what's the beauty of offensive football. It takes all 11 for, for plays like that. If there's not guys, you know, at the receiver position blocking downfield, the offensive line did a great job of covering them up, and that's something we've been working on, trying to get them running sideways and giving Travis a, a second to diagnose it. And once he sees a hole, he's able to put his foot in the ground. And, and then once he gets to once he gets past the linebackers, then, then his talent takes over, and he was able to kind of weave his way back and, and make a guy miss there to, uh, to score a touchdown. Tony, with all the talent and skill guys you have, what is it about this sophomore running back where he's kind of catapulted himself into becoming really the, one of the leaders and the main catalyst on your offense? You know, uh, you know, for him, it, it starts with he's a, he's an extremely talented young man. But uh, but you see, when he's giving his his speeches, he's always giving credit to everybody else, and and, and it's not just him. And, and he talks about it himself. It's it's all those guys in that room. And so he's feeding off of Adam Choice. He's feeding off of Feaster. You know, Dixon has brought something new to the room. Uh, so those guys feed off of each other, and, and he's a very talented young man, and he understands the the importance of playing within the within the system and being a team guy. And and when he gets out on the field, I mean, he runs with desperation, and I think that's what's what's allowed him to step in this early in his career and, and, and put up the numbers that he has. We Tony, have does he have another level? You know, I think so. You know, I, I think he does have another level. Um, he, he's he's still got to grow physically. You know, he's nowhere near. If you look at if you look at an Adam Choice and, and, and Feaster up top, he's, he's not. You know, he really had to scratch the surface of how much weight, good weight he can put on. And, you know, he's still learning how to carry the extra weight he's put on in his lower body. And then just challenging him from a from a schematic standpoint to, to really understand the schemes. Uh, you've seen that he's progressed over the year and, and really starting to learn how to how to run behind his blocks, set his blocks up. So, so yeah, he's still got a lot of room to grow. When you have one guy doing a lot of chunk plays like he is, how tempting is it? to ride the hot hand as opposed to your rotations that you guys had? You know, last last week was versus South Carolina was the most amount of carries in 28, and I was very, very proud of how he carried the load. But you, you look in the first half, he only touched it nine times. So so those guys have been able to, to complement each other. And then when Choice can go in there and, and average seven yards to carry, you know, so Travis isn't having to do it all by himself. There was one game this season where he did carry a heavy load, and, and I think that's what's helped him to be, to be dynamic here in, in the uh, late in the season and going into the postseason because he's, he's, he's relatively fresh. Here you guys are 13. Congratulations. Yeah, you know, it, so we kept, we kept kind of, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot. And we knew it was going to be a game with the weather, that it was going to be a little bit tougher to throw the football. And, and they got a really, really good third down package. They, they, they bring an odd personnel group in and really, really challenge you. And, and we had some opportunities. We just didn't come down with them. We're so used to those big guys on the outside going up and making those plays. And we put them in position to make some of those plays. And tonight, we just didn't make those 50-50 balls. And, and then obviously, you know, you're in a situation where you're in some long yardage, so you try to mix it up, run a little bit because of the conditions. And, and yeah, we weren't our best on third down. And, and some of it stemmed with we got behind the cha behind the chains a couple times on first down, but the second down. But but overall, proud of, of the way our guys battled and when they needed to find plays, they found plays. Here you guys are, 13 and nine. You say you just get started. What, what else is out there? What more? How much better can you guys get this year, especially? You know, you, you, you look at, you know, the guys are disappointed that we gave up one sack. You know, we had one sack in the, in the previous five games, and we were trying to have no sacks. We did a really good job at ball security, but we weren't good on third down. You know, we had five or six in the red zone, so we weren't 100%. So there's always something that we can challenge ourselves. We haven't played the perfect game. You know, and we know we're going to have to be at our best, you know, going into the postseason with the caliber teams that we're going to have to play. And, and the comment that I made was reference to the program. You know, if, if we want to be considered, you know, you know, an elite program, then we got to be consistent year in and year out. And so we're just, like I said, we're just getting started. We're not satisfied, and I think that's why you know our guys are able to remain focused because we understand that you know you got to be your best every single day. And nobody cares what you did last year. It's all about what you got in front of you. And that's that's what I meant. Tony, big picture. Glad to see you, bro. We now.
you know, I'm, I'm excited to look at the game and kind of see exactly you know, the areas that we want to improve. But we just got to continue to, to harp on ball security, protecting the quarterback, and, and then being able to, to stay efficient on, on base downs. You know, we had we had some spurts where we were really efficient, and then there were some times where we were uh, one yard here, a couple negative yards. So really, just being efficient on, on base downs so that we can stay aggressive and stay attacked. With the passing game tonight, do you think some of the issues maybe with was the field conditions? Oh, no, no question. And, and, and obviously, when you're when you're in a game like that and, and you're running the football well, you don't want to take as many chances throwing the ball over the middle. So it limits some of the passing game that you're going to be able to throw because you don't want to put the defense in a, in a bad situation by creating a turnover by throwing the ball over the middle. So some of our passing game was taken away, and then you know they were letting them play. You know the refs were letting those guys play, and there were a lot of contested plays, and we're so used to making those plays. And in this condition, I think it kind of neutralizes it and makes it a fair advantage. I mean, it almost an even even battle. Whereas on a dry surface, we probably got the advantage with our height and speed on the outside. Were you a little surprised on Travis's first touchdown to see Trevor down there, <laughs> right at the goal line with him? Oh man, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that, and, and I'm anxious to see that on film now that you point that out. But I mean, he's a competitor. I mean, Obviously, man, we're we're in this position because of his growth and his maturity uh, in the season, and just just his his will to will to win, will to lead, and, and to go out and to play through mistakes. And, and and even when he has success, he, he stays humble about it. So the future is extremely bright uh, for Trevor Lawrence, and, and, uh, and if he'll stay true to himself, which I believe he will, just a lot like Deshaun, uh, sky's gonna be the limit for him. Tony, how are you going to your time and strategize for a playoff game? And, like, you make different tweaks each year. You know, uh, that's one of that's one of the positives about you know this being the fourth year we, we, we know we have a proven plan and then obviously based off of where we're going what the travel time is and maybe a, a few tweaks in the, in the schedule but but for us you know the big thing is to make sure that we have a sound plan and don't overdo it we don't want to chase ghosts at this point in time this late in the season uh, and in the postseason I mean, you do what you do and, and the key is to be able to do it better than better than your opponents so we got to make sure that we have a couple of wrinkles just like we had a couple of wrinkles tonight and didn't quite to use get to use as many because of the weather but we'll have some wrinkles but at the end of the day I mean, you got to do what you do, and you got to do it well in order to be able to uh, uh, to advance the postseason.